think that's appropriate? Yes. Okay, ready? Say your name, say what you're presenting. Hello, my name is Daniel Hatch, and today we'll be trying Crema de Mezcal from Del Maguey. Do you want to read us a little disclosure on the side? Oh, buddy. Del Maguey presents another unique traditional libation made in the lush remote mountains of Oaxaca, Mexico. Sip this delicious beverage before and after meals. Make a great margarita with nothing other than just fresh lime juice. Drizzle it over any fruit or pastry for dessert. There are no chemicals, colorings, or any additives used in any Del Maguey single village mezcal products. Pero what about, bien, tan bien. Yeah, what about the other thing that said about women? Ah, for women only, and for a few strong men. <laughs> I like that a lot. I like this a lot because this, this is like cloying and sweet. I get the joke they're making. This is very sweet, but it's still foolproof. Uh, this is a actual blend of Del Maguey's um, San Luis del Rio, which is a single village product uh, made just with Espadine from San Luis del Rio. Once they're done making it, they take a reserve of the agave, uh, meal de agave, or like the agave syrup that comes after roasting these particular piñas for uh, five days is what they said on the website, but in other literature also published by Del Maguey, they say six to eight days. So it's a little bit of a discrepancy there. Um, but they squeeze out uh, the syrup, reserve some of it, and once they're completely done making the San Luis del Rio, they mix it together at a blend of 10% agave syrup to 90% San Luis del Rio. This also helps them control the proof level, which is often a problem with mezcal, because mezcal can be very proofy, and different mezcaleros approach bringing it down to proof and making it drinkable in different ways. So in this particular fashion, they're adding syrup to bring it down to proof. So it gets a very thick, cloying uh, sort of um, substance, but it's full of like apricot and pears. Like I get peppercorn. The sweetness brings out a lot of like herbal characteristics of it, and I think it's rather nice. Something to note about this fall specifically and the region of San Luis del Rio. San Luis del Rio, big producer of mezcal. Lots of stuff comes out of there. It's in Oaxaca in the Valle Centrias. Uh, I mean, I cannot pronounce that. The Central Valley. It's in the Central Valley, and uh, this is on the Colorado River. And uh, it's or the Colorado Hormiga. And uh, this particular one is actually a little bit uh, lower down comparatively to the other mountainous regions in Oaxaca. It's only about 900 meters above as opposed to way up in the sky. Um, San Luis del Rio is also where Del Maguey sources all of its agave to make vida, which is used for lots of cocktails. It is pretty good stuff. Um, what they do is they take agave, espian agave from all over San Luis del Rio, not just one estate, and they cook it all together and so you get a very regular product. Similar to the way bourbon has a very regular taste is because you're sourcing corn from all over the place. So it has a very, it's a set average. That's a way to think about it. So um, you're saying that crema del maguey, crema de mezcal is espadín from San Luis del Rio. Yes, it's actually their single village product, not their Vita blend. Okay. So it's, there's another bottle called San Luis del Rio. It's a single village. So it's that one, okay. And it's that okay. one plus agave gives you uh -huh. the crema. San Luis del Rio by itself is just itself. But the blend of all the agaves from San Luis del Rio sold as a cocktail spirit is Vita. And this comes in full proof. Uh, uh, standard like American sort of proofing, like 80, uh, 80 proof I do believe. Yes. And that's and that's about it. Um, yeah, I'd rather like... Serve. One for you. Uh, did I get one? No, you didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you checked all of them just to be sure. <laughs> Any thoughts? Um, really wonderful. Um, I like that it, even just as an after dinner drink. Um, on its own, very slow sipping. Um, sweet. Uh, the the notes that I get from it specifically is like honey. Yeah. And uh, remember how we talked about um, yeah. the Karwinskis, how they were like lower in elevation as well. I think that was it, the Madre Cuchas? Yeah, lower in elevation. So all the water that gets to it has interacted with so many other things on the top of the mountain uh, that it adds to sort of that flavor. So um, yeah, I'm getting that same vibe there. It's like a cleaner water, as if like a sweeter, cleaner water. Yeah, um, I, that I'm tasting. I agree. Little I think I think it's great. Um, other little random brand notes about Del Maguey. We've gone over before, but found in 1995 by an artist. He is very into conservation and about uh, really purveying the me uh, the mezcal of these two mezcal producers, Pablo Velasco, I believe his name is, and his uh, cousin. 
Um, and I enjoy their mezcal, and I recommend one drinks it. I think this would actually also go very well in a cocktail. This is just screaming shrub. Yeah. It's screaming peach shrub yeah. for some I reason. Think I we think we should totally do that. Yeah, sounds, like yeah. sounds great. Good job, Dan. Thank, Thank you. you.